Our male protagonist, Megumo, is originally a weak high school student who is ridiculed by his classmates. On this day, he and all his classmates are suddenly summoned to another world by God to fight against the powerful demon race. Everyone makes a new career in another world. The other students are all good at fighting and Koki, the most handsome male student in their class, has even become the most important hero man. But Nagumo's profession is synergist, a mundane one similar to craftsmen and smiths, not good at fighting and can only be considered as an assistant. Nagumo is mocked by his classmates, but he can only endure their ridicule because he is too weak. Later, the classmates embark on an adventure in the labyrinth of dungeon, which is full of monsters, and they encounter unusually powerful monsters in the depths of the labyrinth. Even the hero cannot defeat the monster they can only choose to escape, to cover his classmates' escape. Nagumo chooses to use his skills to refine stones into stone walls to block monsters. Nagumo later turns and flees but just then. He is attacked by a classmate and falls directly into the depths of the labyrinth. Nagumo encounters more monsters here. He is not good at fighting and he is soon cut off by a giant bear with his left hand. Nagumo uses his ability to refine stones to dig a tunnel in the labyrinth and escapes from the giant bear. At the end of this tunnel, there is a magical gemstone that will flow out liquid with magical powers. After drinking the spring water, Nagumo feels very hungry. To survive, Nagumo creates traps to kill some weak monsters and eats the monster's flesh. But the monster's flesh is poisonous and Nagumo almost dies. Though the fluid from the gemstones helps Nagumo recover, but his body changes as a result, Nagumo's hair turns white, his pupils turn red, and he gets the ability to gain experience and magic by eating monsters. Recovering his mana, Nagumo begins to think about how to escape the labyrinth. After his ability to refine stone becomes stronger, he can extract metals from ore. Nagumo makes pistols and bullets out of metal, and he uses guns to compensate for his weakness in combat. Nagumo then shoots many monsters with guns and continues to grow stronger by eating them. In the end, Nagumo manages to defeat the mighty giant bear and his mentality changes during this time. Nagumo goes from a cowardly student to a strong, ruthless warrior. Nagumo continues to hunt monsters and uses the liquid of gemstones to craft potions to heal his injuries. As Nagumo defeats more and more monsters, he has become stronger and he has come to a deeper part of the labyrinth. Meanwhile, Nagumo's classmates return to the ground. Many of them feeling guilty about Nagumo, but others don't care about Nagumo's sacrifice as the classmates return to the ground to recuperate. Nagumo is still fighting in the labyrinth. Deep in labyrinth, he finds a strange gate with two holes in it. At this moment, the statues on both sides of the gate suddenly awaken and launch an attack on Nagumo. However, Nagumo is now much stronger than before, and the statue is hit in the head by Nagumo's bullet and dies in an instant. The two statues each have a bead on their heads, and after putting these two beads into the hole in the gate, the strange gate opens. In the door, there is an altar in which a beautiful girl with blonde hair is imprisoned. Nagumo originally does not want to rescue this beautiful girl who looks dangerous, but the other party says that she is betrayed and imprisoned. Nagumo thinks of his experience of being betrayed and sympathizes with the beautiful girl. So Nagumo refines the altar that seals the beautiful girl and rescues her. The beautiful girl's name is you, a 300-year-old vampire, but it's not so easy to save you. There is also a monster guard near the altar. Nagumo picks out you on his back and prepares to fight the monster. This time, the monster has a thick carapace and Nagumo's gun cannot deal effective damage. At this time, Yu sucks some of Nagumo's blood and instantly recovers a small amount of mana. And then Yu uses magic to break the monster's carapace and Nagumo fires a shot at the crack in the carapace and kills the monster. Nagumo again eats the monster's meat as a roast and talks to Yu about the labyrinth. Nagumo learns that the labyrinth is built by God's enemies and that there are treasures left by God's enemies on the bottom floor. At the same time, Nagumo also builds a sniper rifle, which is more powerful than a pistol. Now, Nagumo has two goals, one is to leave Labyrinth, and the other is to return to Earth. When Yu learns about it, she offers to go to Earth with Nagumo, and they become the best partners venturing together into the Labyrinth and heading towards the bottom of the Labyrinth. Nagumo and Yu then encounter a group of monsters with flowers on their heads which seem to be controlled by someone and constantly chase them. Nagumo speculates that the flowers may be some kind of parasitic plant which is used by more powerful monsters to control others. They are chased to a room by monsters and Yu suddenly starts attacking Nagumo. A flower grows on her head, apparently she's controlled by a monster. Nagumo constantly dodges Yu's attacks and is finally hit by a monster. And a flower grows on his head as well. But because Nagumo has eaten a lot of monsters, he is immune to monster viruses and he is free from the control of flowers. Nagumo shoots the flower off Yu's head and kills the owner of the flower with another shot. 
Nagumo then roasts a monster and eats it while Yu doesn't need to eat, she just needs to suck Nagumo's blood. With Yu's help, Nagumo makes it to the deepest part of the labyrinth. Soon they are at the bottom. The boss guarding here is a basilisk with several heads. Each head of the basilisk can emit attacks with different attributes, and it is very powerful. Not only that, after Nagumo shoots and injures the basilisk, the basilisk has a healing spell head that can heal its injuries. The first time you encounter such a strong enemy, she feels scared. To comfort you, Nagumo kisses her and promises to take her out of the labyrinth. They then attack the basilisk again, and Nagumo fires powerful bullets from his sniper rifle, breaking the snake head, which is good at healing. Yu uses magic with different attributes to restrain different snake heads. With the efforts of the two, the basilisk is finally defeated, but they don't expect that the basilisk will have a head that could be resurrected. Nagumo shields Yu while blocking the basilisk attack with his body. But he also loses one eye. Yu pulls Nagumo aside and rushes at the basilisk with her gun in hand. But before she can hit the basilisk, she is knocked down. You can't help but cry. Nagumo hears Yu's crying and instantly gets sober. Nagumo then picks up Yu and keeps dodging the attack. Yu sucks a little of Nagumo's blood, replenishes her mana. And then they begin their final attack. Nagumo jumps into the air and drops two bombs on top of Labyrinth. After the bomb explodes, the rubble crushes the basilisk and Yu takes the opportunity to use magic to hit the basilisk with precision, finally killing it completely. After the death of the basilisk, Nagumo, who has no strength at all, falls into a coma. When Nagumo wakes up, he finds himself in a clean and tidy room. This is the lowest hidden space of the labyrinth. Once the residence of God's enemy, so there are many living utensils here. Nagumo takes a shower, changes his clothes, and begins to explore the house. He is in a room and sees the corpse of God's enemies. When Nagumo reaches the center of the room, the bones suddenly appear as a projection of memory, and the enemies of the gods tell Nagumo that they are the builders of the labyrinth. The whole labyrinth is a test, and those who pass the test gain knowledge and strength. A large amount of memory and knowledge then enters Nagumo's mind, where he learns the history of God's enemies and learns the skills of the labyrinth builder. It turns out that there are seven enemies of God, and they are called traitors by God, but in fact they are revolutionaries. Dissatisfied with God's cruelty to humans, they bravely resist, and after their defeat, they build seven labyrinths to pass on their power and continue to fight the gods. The master of this labyrinth excels at spells that control objects, and his spells are perfect for Nagumo. Nagumo uses his crafting abilities combined with spells to control objects to create robotic arms as flexible as flesh as well as two cars. In addition, there are heavy weapons such as Gatling artillery and so on. Nagumo also makes a ring and marries you here. Two months later, Nagumo has thoroughly learned the knowledge of the owner of Labyrinth, and he is ready to leave with you to embark on a new journey. After they leave the Labyrinth, they meet Rabbit Girl She, who is chased by monsters. She has a perfect body and is very pretty, but Nagumo has no interest in her. But She wants Nagumo, who looks strong, to protect her. At the same time, the monster starts to attack Nagumo, who immediately fires back, killing the monster with one shot. She finds Nagumo so powerful, hugs him tightly, and begs him to save the Rabbit People. But Nagumo has no interest in being a hero. He just wants to explore the next labyrinth and find a way back to Earth. She's people happen to be near the next labyrinth, and she offers to be Nagumo's guide in exchange for protection. So Nagumo sets off with She. Soon they arrive in the forest where the next labyrinth is located, which is She's home. As soon as he arrives in the forest, Nagumo kills May monsters. But this does not completely save the rabbit people from danger. There are a large number of monsters in the forest, but the rabbit people are not good at fighting, so they are always attacked by various monsters. After seeing Nagumo's power, the rabbit people want him to teach them how to fight. In the process of teaching the rabbit people to fight, Nagumo discovers that the rabbit people are very strong, but they are too kind and reluctant to harm any animal. This mentality is certainly difficult for them to survive in the cruel woods. Under the tutelage of Nagumo and Yu, the mentality of she and the rabbit people change. They become braver, even a little cruel. Once the rabbit people learn to fight, they can easily survive in the forest. Nagumo and the rabbit people defeat the monster that threatens them and then arrive at the entrance to the labyrinth. The rabbit people say goodbye to Nagumo, but she wants to go to the labyrinth with Nagumo. During this time, she has fallen in love with the powerful Nagumo. And although Nagumo does not like she at this time, Yu agrees to let she enter the labyrinth with them and Nagumo does not refuse. Forest Labyrinth is about as difficult as the previous labyrinth. This is no threat to Nagumo and Yu who have already completed a labyrinth, but for she the labyrinth's trap is dangerous. She's weapon is a large hammer with which she smashes many traps. And although it does not provide Nagumo with much help, 
is not a burden either. At the very bottom of Labyrinth, there are no more pitfalls. What stops them is a swarm of armored robots, which are not very powerful for Nagumo now. Nagumo easily breaks through the robots' defenses and reaches the lowest hidden room. Here, however, there is a final test. They need to defeat an oversized robot to gain the power of Labyrinth's master. The robot is made of special materials. The body is so strong that even Nagumo's bullets cannot penetrate it, and the robot is also capable of repairing itself. But the robot is very bulky due to its large body. After Nagumo knocks it down, Yu freezes the robot's body with magic ice. Nagumo then attacks continuously at one specific position, shattering the robot's armor and Shia attacks the crack in the armor with a hammer finally killing the robot. They then meet the robot's manipulator, the summoner of Labyrinth's master, who waits here for someone who passes the test. The master of the forest Labyrinth is good at spells that manipulate gravity, which Nagumo and Shia have difficulty learning. But Yu, who is good at magic, quickly masters it. After learning the spell, the three of them are sucked directly from the labyrinth into the water and finally exits from a lake in the forest. In the process, she drowns and Nagumo has to give her artificial respiration. Unexpectedly, after she wakes up, she kisses Nagumo directly. Nagumo embarrassingly throws she into the lake again. And Forest Labyrinth's test ends in a lovely joke between the trio. After leaving the forest, they come to the city. Leader of the Adventurer's Guild discovers that Nagumo is powerful and hires him for a mission. Nagumo also needs the money and agrees to the guild's request. They are looking for a missing nobleman, and this town is the place where the nobleman disappears, and a group of Nagumo classmates also work there. Nagumo's teacher travels to another world with her students. Like Nagumo, the teacher is not good at fighting. She is an agronomist. However, this ability is very important for the kingdom of another world. So the king sends her to lead a group of classmates who are also not good at fighting to a farm near the town. At lunchtime, Nagumo and his teacher meet in a restaurant. The teacher treats all the students very well, so Nagumo still has great respect for the teacher. But Nagumo knows that one of his classmates has framed him, so he doesn't trust his classmates. So when the teacher offers to let Nagumo return to class, Nagumo refuses her request. That's when the Knight of the Kingdom notices Shi. For the people of the Kingdom races other than humans are heretics. The Knight tries to capture Shi and Nagumo directly wounds him with one shot. The soldier realizes Nagumo's strength and does not dare to capture Shi anymore. But the Knight's words make Shi feel very disappointed. She thinks humans hate rabbit ears. But Yu tells Shi that Nagumo loves rabbit ears and sometimes surreptitiously touches her rabbit ears when she is asleep. Nagumo feels very shy. That night, the teacher again tries to persuade Nagumo to return to class. But Nagumo tells the teacher that they are summoned to another world by God, and according to the memory of Labyrinth's master, God is extremely cruel. Nagumo believes that the God summons them to another world not to fight the demons at all, but to have fun. So if he will not obey God's will like everyone else. The teacher understands Nagumo's idea and no longer asks him to return to class. However, the teacher thinks that since Nagumo is going to find the missing person, it would be better for her and her students to help. Nagumo accepts the teacher's helps, summons an off-road vehicle, and sets off with his classmates to continue to search for the missing nobleman. Nagumo puts a magic stone in his blind eye, and he builds some reconnaissance planes, and the picture detected by the reconnaissance plane would be transmitted directly into his magic stone. In this way, Nagumo discovers where the nobleman disappears. There are many pieces of equipment that have been burned to charred black. Nagumo then comes to a waterfall based on the trail on the road. There is a cave behind the waterfall, and the nobleman he is looking for is hidden inside. The nobleman tells Nagumo that his team is attacked by monsters, and in the end only he survives. After Nagumo rescues the nobleman, they have not gone far when a dragon suddenly attacks them. Nagumo summons a shield to block the dragon's first attack. Yu and Shi attack the dragon after its attacks are over. However, their attacks cannot damage the dragon. The teacher and classmates are unhelpful and Nagumo tells them to run away. Nagumo then starts attacking the dragon more violently. His attack is unable to kill the dragon, but it still knocks it to the ground. Yu tells Nagumo that the dragon's only weakness is the non-scales part of its body, so Nagumo picks up a huge steel pipe and stabs it into the dragon's butt. <clears throat> the dragon actually makes a woman's voice out of the pain. It turns out that the dragon is a woman of the dragon Turan race, and she is manipulated by bad people. So she attacks humans. Nagumo attacks her ass, uses pain to wake her up and frees her from the bad one. After solving the misunderstanding, Nagumo pulls out the steel pipe. The dragon instantly changes back to her human appearance, and she turns out to be a sexy beauty. Her name is Tio, and she's a princess of the Draco. Tio has some special proclivities, and she actually falls in love with Nagumo because of the pain he gives her. Apart from Tio, the bad guy also manipulates a lot of monsters. At this time, a large army of monsters is preparing to attack the territory of humans. The teacher asks Nagumo to help stop the army of monsters, and Nagumo agrees her request. Nagumo then forges a high wall out of stone. 
At night, the army of Warcraft comes outside the city walls. Nagumo uses Gatling to strafe the monster army and Tayo and Yu also start attacking the monsters with magic. But their attacks cannot destroy all the monsters. And in order to completely defeat the monster army, they rush into the monster army in a street fighter. Nagumo notices that there is a human in the army of monsters. And this person is the same person who controlled Tio before. After Nagumo defeats the man, the monster army stops moving. Surprisingly, this person turns out to be Nagumo's classmate Shimizu. Turns out that Shimizu has a bad mentality because he has been despised by his classmates for a long time. The demon discovers Shimizu's problem and secretly lures him into mutiny. So Shimizu, with the help of the demon clan, gains the ability to control the army of monsters. The teacher's agronomist ability is even more valuable to humans than the hero, so the demon sends Shimizu to kill the teacher. Unrepentant after being captured, Shimizu suddenly kidnaps the teacher and forces everyone to retreat. At this time, the demon race lying in an ambush nearby suddenly attacks Shimizu, and the teacher is poisoned and unconscious. Nagumo can only feed the antidote to the teacher with his mouth and finally brings the teacher back to life. But Shimizu is seriously injured and can't be saved. Nagumo kills Shimizu with one shot ending his suffering. After Shimizu's death, Nagumo's mission to save the nobleman is completely completed, and he says goodbye to his teacher and continues his journey. Nagumo and the others come to the next city, where there is an aquarium with a human-speaking fish on display. Nagumo chats with him and discovers that his intelligence is similar to that of a human. So Nagumo decides to save him from the aquarium. While Nagumo releases the fish, the fish tells Nagumo that the person who sells him to the aquarium also catches a little girl from the fish turrens. Coincidentally, as soon as Nagumo returns to the city, he feels the aura of a fish turren girl in the sewers. Nagumo rescues the girl, bathes her, and feeds her. The little girl, Mew, is caught by gangsters and finds an opportunity to escape into the sewers until she is rescued by Nagumo. Mew takes the gentle Nagumo as her father, but Nagumo does not want to take Mew on a dangerous adventure, so Nagumo intends to hand Mew over to the local welfare agency. Although Mew is reluctant to leave Nagumo, Nagumo separates from her. Soon after, the gangsters who have caught Mayo again take her from the welfare agency, because Mew is a fish terran and can be sold for a lot of money. Upon learning the news, the enraged Nagumo prepares to rescue Mew. Later, the gang's stronghold in the city is attacked by Nagumo and his companions. Defeating these people is no difference to Nagumo than killing some bugs. He rescues Mew easily. This time, Nagumo is no longer comfortable handing Mew over to the welfare agency, and he decides to adopt Mew until he finds Mew's biological parents. After coming to the next city, Nagumo becomes a VIP guest of the local adventurer's guild due to his previous outstanding performance, at this time, suddenly an adventurer of the assassin class comes to the guild for help and he is surprised to find that Nagumo is in the guild. It turns out that this assassin is also one of Nagumo's classmates, and he goes to the guild for help because his classmates are in danger in the labyrinth. After Nagumo completes the entire labyrinth challenge, his classmates continue to struggle through the middle level of the labyrinth, but they encounter not only monsters but also the ambush of the demon race. The demon sends a general to attack Kuki, who is a hero. Believing that defeating the hero is the key to defeating the human race. The demon general is very powerful and can manipulate monsters in Labyrinth. Kuki and his classmates are quickly defeated by the demon general, leaving the assassin, who is good at hiding, to escape from Labyrinth and seek help from the outside world. Soon, among his classmates, Kuki has no experience in killing and hesitates at the last moment. The demon general takes this opportunity to completely defeat Kuki, and all his classmates fall into despair. Nagumo learns the news and decides to help rescue his classmates. So when the classmates in Labyrinth are about to be killed by the monsters, Nagumo arrives at the scene, kills the monster, and saves the classmates. Due to the huge change in Nagumo's appearance, some students do not even recognize Nagumo, but a female classmate who has always had a crush on Nagumo Kori recognizes him immediately. Nagumo asks his companions to take care of his classmates first, and he personally deals with the demon general. The monsters in the labyrinth are very weak for Nagumo, who has already completed the labyrinth test, and he easily shoots all the monsters with a pistol. When the assassin tells the other classmates that the white-haired man is Nagumo, they can't believe it. The classmate who is framed Nagumo is even more frightened, and he is very worried that Nagumo would know the truth. At the moment, Nagumo doesn't know who has framed him in the first place. Soon, Nagumo kills all the monsters. The demon general knows that she cannot defeat Nagumo and turns around and tries to escape. Nagumo stops her and injures her leg to prevent her from escaping. The demon general refuses to surrender and demands that Nagumo grant her a quick death. Nagumo accedes to her request and kills the demon general with one shot. Many classmates find it difficult to accept this scene because Nagumo kills someone who cannot resist. But now Nagumo is so ruthless to the enemy. Kaori then cries as she hugs Nagumo, who she thinks is dead after Nagumo disappears. 
Now that she sees Nagumo again, she will never leave Nagumo again anyway. On the way out of dungeon, the kind Koki is still questioning Nagumo why he kills the demon general who is no longer able to resist. Nagumo points his gun directly at Kuki, warning that he will kill his classmates if they become the enemies. Kuki instantly does not dare to accuse Nagumo anymore. Back on the ground, Nagumo prepares to leave the city and continue to other labyrinth adventures. Kori confesses directly to Nagumo and asks Nagumo to take her with him. Although Yu is already Nagumo's wife, Kaori believes that her love will not be inferior to anyone. Yu is also not afraid of challenges, and she agrees to let Kaori join the team, so Nagumo agrees to Kaori's request. In this way, Nagumo continues his journey with four girls who adore him and a little girl who sees him as a father. Although the enemy who frames him has not yet been found and the demons and monsters are still dangerous, Nagumo is not afraid of any challenge, because although his profession is ordinary, he has still become the strongest in the world.